Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem ecma'in. Allahümme enfa'ni bima allamteni ve allimni bima yanfa'ni ve zidni ilman yenneke antel alimul hakim. My topic today is about the bilateral hyperlucent hemithorax. Common causes, differential diagnosis for common and less common causes and essential for the diagnosis and I will give you some examples on the causes. Essential information pulmonary causes usually related to airway disease. Pulmonary vascular causes much less common. Extra pulmonary causes can be congenital or developmental lack of chest wall soft tissue, bilateral mastectomy, also one of the causes. Technical overexposure, uncommon with digital radiograph, and it is also can be seen on CT scan in cases on, of incorrect window and level setting on the CT scan. The common causes of bilateral hyperlucent hemothorax include centrilobular emphysema, panlobular emphysema, bronchiectasis, bronchiolitis. Clues for the common diagnosis. Centrilobular emphysema, it is most common type of emphysema, almost always related to smoking, a predominate in the upper lobes and superior segment of the lower lobes. Radiographically, it presents hyperinflation, attenuation of the vessels in the affected areas. On the CT scan, we see centrilobular fossae of low attenuation without perceptible walls. Boldly, it is an emphysematous space more than one centimeter. Here we see in this chest X-ray bilateral pulmonary hyperinflation with marked attenuation of the pulmonary vessels in the mid and upper zones, and we see the flattening and depressed both hemidiaphragms. Here, axial cut CT scan, high resolution, we see predominantly high bar predominantly centered without emphysema in patient with heavy cigarette smoking and also not the lung periphery are spared from the involvement. Bandlobular emphysema most common associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and rarely associated with intravenous drug abused like methylphenidate, ritalin, predominantly involve the basal portion of the lungs. By chest X-ray, we see hyperinflation and attenuation of the blood vessels of the affected area, particularly the lower lobe zones. On CT scan, we see hyperinflation, particularly on the of the lower lobes, and diffuse attenuation of the affected lung parenchyma with the small vessels. Here we see on this axial cut CT scan, panlobular emphysema involving the both lower lobes 
and characterized by decreased lung attenuation and small blood vessels. The right upper lobe is compressed, but otherwise relatively spared. Here, another coronal cut CT scan reconstruction marked decreased parenchymal attenuation involving both lower lobes as compared to the upper lobes, which contain amount of centrilobular emphysema in the right upper lobes, and the both upper lobes, sorry. And we see here hyperinflation and the flattening of the from cases, there is hyperinflation and air traveling from associated small airway disease and related to chronic or recurrent infection, rarely a result of congenital cartilage abnormality in patients with William Campbell syndrome. On chest X-ray, we see pulmonary hyperinflation, dilated bronchi, tram tracking, parallel lines representing non-tapering wall of ectetic bronchi seen in the profile, and mucoid impaction may be present. On CT scan, for bronchiectasis, we see bronchial abnormalities clearly seen with diffuse low attenuation and the small vessels often presented in the bronchima supplied by dilated and inflamed bronchi. Extensive air traveling may be apparent on expiratory CT scan. Here we see corona reconstructed images, bilateral bronchiectasis associated with low attenuation oligemic region of the lungs and have a small airway disease. Battery also area of ground glass obesities reflect the normal lung. So we have a bronchiectasis and air driving and the ground glass obesities of normal lung. Here, another patient with uh, bronchiectasis with thick wall with air trapping associated with uh, a fossae of mucoid impaction here, and they are filling the bronchi bronchioles with mucoid material, and the grind glass obesities are uh, reflecting the normal lung. Bronchiolitis usually infectious in origin, or either viral or mycoplasma. On the chest X-ray, we see hyperinflation and the small lung nodules. On the CT scan, we see centrilobular nodules and the three embod obesities. As we see here in this chest CT scan, multiple bilateral centrilobular nodules involving both lungs, and it will embed the appearance. In this patient uh, with infectious bronchiolitis associated with a relatively low attenuation of the lung with some scattered airway, air traveling in both lungs here, there, and there. Less common causes include constrictive uh, bronchiolitis, asthma, pulmonary lung has histocytosis, and lymphangiomatosis. Clues for these common causes. Constrictive bronchiolitis, it is some mucosal and bronchial fibrosis resulting in luminal narrowing or occlusion. Numerous causes include infection, viral, adenovirus, respiratory syncytial virus, mycoplasma, and pneumocystis infection, connective tissue disease, especially rheumatoid arthritis, and Sjogren syndrome, A drug reaction, inhalation, injury like in toxic fumes or smoke, 
to transplant lung and the blood stem cells. On chest X-ray, we can see normal lung volume with, due to hyperinflation. CT heterogeneity of the lung with the smaller vessels in small in area of low attenuation. Expiratory imaging confirms the presence of air trapping. So the expiratory phase, it is mandatory to give you the diagnosis. Here we see in patient with uh, constrictive uh, bronchiolitis, coronal CT reconstruction, multiple area of low attenuation areas with the grand, grand glass obesities, giving the appearance of mosaic attenuation. With a small attenuated visits in the low attenuated area due to small airway disease. Asthma, chronic, it is a chronic airway inflammation with remolding. On chest X-ray, we can see most patients have normal or near normal radiograph. Bronchial wall thickening may be evident. Pulmonary hyperinflation in severe cases. On CT scan, we have a bronchial wall thickening, bronchial luminal narrowing, air driving on expiratory CT scan, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis should be considered with central bronchiectasis and the mucoid impaction. Here we see chest X-ray shows diffuse bilateral hyperinflation in both lungs. And there is also the patient has inhaler in his pocket in, in this in this area, and this is patient with asthma. Pulmonary lung hands histocytosis. Nearly all patients are smoker. On chest X-ray, we see hyperinflation, reticular or reticular nodular abnormalities sparing the costophrenic sulci. On CT scan, our lobe body immunant cyst vary in size and shape. Small nodules with plus minus central losenses progressive to cyst over time. Grand glass obesity and the spontaneous pneumothorax in about less than 10%. Here we see patient with the chest X-ray with Langer hands hostocytosis with faint fine uh, faint reticular nodular button of the in the both lungs and, and right sided pneumothorax. The lungs are mildly hyperinflated. And this CT scan with patient with the Langer Hans histocytosis, we see multiple uh, nodules, centrally in location with a small cyst. And these cyst, uh, these nodules are progressive to cyst. Lymphangiomyomatosis occur exclusively in women of childbearing age or patient with tuberous sclerosis. Radiographically, patient has uh, hyperinflation, diffuse reticular, reticular abnormalities of sober imposed by cyst, a pleural effusion, and it is chylus in origin. CT scan, we see diffuse lung cyst ranging from 2 to 20 millimeter within small walls associated finding with renal angiomyelibomas, retroperitoneal or mediastinal lymphangiomas, chylus pleural effusion. Patient may present with recurrent or chronic pneumothoraces. Here we see this patient with lymphangiomyomatosis, chest X-ray, with uh, hyperinflation and uh, decreased attenuation of both lungs, 
with assist on the light level zone associated with some scattered reticular nodular uh, pattern on the both lungs. Here, coronary reconstruction CT scan with patient with uh, lymph and myomatosis with diffused lung cyst with uh, no zonal predominance, and uh, you see the uh, uniformity of the size and uh, chest assist wall associated with hyperinflated lung. And these patients uh, present may develop the chronic and recurrent pneumothorax. Rare but important causes pulmonary atresia. Pulmonary atresia present in a neonatal period patient with cyanosis associated with other congenital cardiac malformation like tetralogy of fillet. Patient has on chest X-ray cardiomegaly, concave pulmonary artery segment, and pulmonary oligemia. Diagnosis usually confirmed by echography, echocardiography, or cardiac MRI. Here, this patient with pulmonary atresia, we see the right cardiomegaly with pulmonary oligemia. Patient has a blalolactosic shunt, not the splaying of the right ribs on the on the right side. Thank you very much for listening. Hoping to see you in another talk soon.